We're flying from the airstrip at Mavu Lodge in Luanda National Park to the Chalinda Airstrip in Naika National Park. We're flying almost the entire length of Lake Malawi, about 300 miles. It's one of Africa's great lakes. It's the third largest and the second deepest lake in Africa. About two hours into our flight, we pass over the town of Rumpa on the southern edge of the Niika Plateau. As we fly onto the plateau, the landscape dramatically changes. The plateau has gently rolling hills covered with what appears to be grass. We can see rock outcroppings poking through the grasslands, usually at the top of the rolling hills. The valleys between the hills are green and look like they are fed by runoff. Approaching the airstrip, we fly over a stand of tall trees with well-defined edges. We have arrived. It's chilly up here at over 7,000 feet, and we scramble to dig out jackets. It's only a short drive to Chalinda Lodge. The lodge sits at the end of that stand of tall trees we saw flying in. We find our chalet and settle into our comfortable log cabin with a fireplace, asking ourselves, are we still in Africa? We're eager for a game drive to explore this new world, but the weather has deteriorated. We soon learn about Chipperoni, a local weather condition caused by cool, moist air from Lake Malawi, bringing dense fog to the plateau. It can last up to a week. It makes for great atmospheric pictures, but a little goes a long way. Happily, by the end of the game drive, the ceiling is lifting. Hopefully the morning will bring clear skies. Great news, we woke up this morning to a beautiful day on the Naika Plateau. We have some questions about those trees that seem out of place in a national park. They're Mexican weeping pines. They were planted in the 1960s as an experiment that failed, but the trees are still here. The lodge was built with this wood and it's used for fuel today for heat, hot water, and electricity generation. Another remnant of the experiment are several lakes and dams which have been stocked with fish for anglers. But on the downside, the gray lumpy vegetation we saw from the air is bracken ferns that came in with the tree seedlings it's now crowding out the native plants. The plateau is a large granite intrusion on the margin of the East African Rift Valley system. It was designated a no hunting zone in 1951 and became a national park in 1965. It was expanded to its current 1,250 square miles in 1978. The plateau is the largest montane ecosystem in South Central Africa. The top of the plateau is rolling grasslands with dombos, a shallow wetland that seasonally feeds rivers and streams. Even though we're coming into the dry season and the grasses are turning brown, there are many flowers. The open grasslands are an ideal home for large antelope. The roan antelope stand four and a half feet at the shoulder and weigh up to 650 pounds. They're closely related to the sable antelope but have a rich reddish brown color that gives them their name. The long tufts at the tips of their ears gives them a comical look. They seem very curious, watching us as much as we watch them. They've developed a taste for aquatic grasses grazing on the bottom of the man-made lakes. The roan are not the largest antelope on the plateau. That honor goes to the eland. Males can weigh in at 2,000 pounds and stand six feet at the shoulder. The females are smaller, weighing up to 1,200 pounds and standing five feet at the shoulder. We found them grazing in herds in the early mornings. A smaller but very handsome antelope of the plateau is the reedbuck. 
The males stand three feet at the shoulder and weigh about 150 pounds. Females are about the same stature, but weigh about 110. We saw them in small herds up to about 20 individuals. We saw the young males sparring with each other several times. A group of bushbuck hang out around the lodge. They're timid browsers, a little smaller than the reedbucks. Zebras are common on the plateau. These are crochet zebra, a subspecies of the plain zebra. They're named for Captain Richard Crochet, a hunter and collector who presented a type specimen to the British Museum in the 1890s. They have narrow stripes and no shadow stripes compared with other plains of zebra. The red color comes from dust baths in the red soil of the plateau. They're only found here in Malawi and in adjacent areas of Zambia, Tanzania, and Mozambique. The pattern of stripes is unique to each individual. Zebras are highly social and live in harems with a stallion, several mares, and their offspring. There are over 400 species of birds in the park. Many live in the forests at the lower elevations. We see many LBBs, little brown birds, flitting in the grasses. But there are some large birds, easier to photograph, like the white-necked raven. This sparrowhawk, as the name implies, is hunting LBBs, or insects or lizards that he might find along the road. The lizard buzzard is more closely related to hawks than buzzards, but the name has stuck. In the late afternoon, we head to a rock outcropping. As the sun begins to fade, we enjoy our sundowners and watch the sunset over the rolling hills of the Niika Plateau. Now is the time for a night drive. The nocturnal residents of the plateau are out hunting. And this might be their prey. On two nights, we see leopards. The plateau is said to have one of the densest populations of leopards in Central Africa. This one came up to the vehicle for a close look. No matter how many you've seen, they're always a thrill. On our last morning, we gather at Chalinda Lodge for a walk in the forest. There are pockets of Miombo forest in the hollows of the plateau. We turn a corner and run into a roan antelope. He reluctantly moves off the trail. This is a taste of the forest that ring the plateau at lower elevations. Early morning mists are rising off the lake. We turn the corner and head back to the lodge. It's time for breakfast and packing up. We arrive at Chalinda Airstrip with its tongue-in-cheek sign. Our plane's here and we load up for our next destination. We wave goodbye to our friends at Chalinda Lodge. <laughs>